This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link in the description below, or you can click on this. In this video, I'm going to derive the Rydberg formula. This actually gives us a real-world tangible uh, understanding of what Bohr's model is trying to do. So Bohr's model, its job is to explain emission and absorption spectrums. Right? That's what it, it's intended to do. So if we take the emission spectrum of hydrogen, we can actually find those specific values with the Rydberg formula. So let's have a look at how we can actually derive this. First of all, let's imagine an electron in an initial state EI. So this is the, the initial energy of an electron. And I'm going to use I for initial. Then we've got a final energy. I'm going to call that EF. That's the final energy of the electron. So the electron starts up over here, and it drops down to the final state. So it started in the higher state, and it's finished in a lower state. Now, when it does this, it has to give off a photon. And that's the process of emission. The reverse process is absorption. So anytime an electron drops to a lower energy level, it gives off a photon. And we actually see that in an emission spectrum. We can measure that. And we can find uh, the wavelength and the frequency of that photon. And we can also find its energy. And from that, we can actually infer the energy change of the electron. So emission is going from a higher state to a lower state and releasing a photon. Absorption is the opposite. Absorption is a photon comes in to the atom, and it hits an electron, and it gives it just enough energy to jump from a lower state to a higher state. So emission and absorption are kind of like mirror images of each other. Emission is dropping and releasing, and absorption is uh, absorbing and then popping up, so jumping up to a higher level. So that's how you kick electrons up to higher levels or how you get them to lower levels. This is the Bohr model, essentially. It's electrons uh, staying in fixed circular orbits and only jumping between of those fixed circular orbits when a photon is either emitted or absorbed. So let's have a look at how we can describe this energy and relate it to something that we can measure in the lab. So we can measure wavelength uh, and we can measure frequencies. Right? Those are things that we can actually measure. Energies, wavelengths, frequencies of photons, those are measurable quantities. But we don't actually know what the electron is doing uh, without measuring the photons. Right? The photons are the only way we can observe the atom. So if we have a look at the delta E, the delta E is actually the change in energy. And that's the initial energy minus the final energy. In this case, because we're dealing with emission, the electron is starting in a higher state, finishing at a lower state. EI is actually going to come first. So this guy is bigger. And that's why we're subtracting. But this is going to give us a positive number. If we had the reverse process and absorption was occurring, then this would actually be a negative number. So we'd have a negative change in energy. right? So it's all about convention. The sign convention uh, is, is really up to the, the person right, who's doing the experiment. As long as you're consistent with your sign convention, uh, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. But I'm going to stick to positive numbers over here while we're deriving the Rydberg formula. So now what we're actually going to do is we're going to use this expression over here to give us an, an alternative expression for delta E. Now, we know that the change in energy is going to be associated with a photon. And that photon is going to have an energy of h nu. Nu, this is not a v, right? This is a nu, uh, the Greek letter nu, like an n. This guy is the frequency, and this guy is Planck's constant. So Planck's constant times the frequency, that's actually going to be the energy of the photon that is being emitted during this process. So we can actually rewrite this expression as hc over lambda. Now, where did that come from? Well, c on lambda is actually equal to the frequency. How do I know that? It comes from this formula over here. The product of the wavelength and the frequency is always going to give the speed of light. This is for a photon. This actually works in general for different types of waves, too. So different types of waves also obey this relationship. But for light, c is the speed of light. Lambda, that's the wavelength of light. And nu, that is the frequency of light. You might also see in, in some other uh, resources that nu is written as f. f is also frequency. So frequency uh, can be uh, denoted by f, and it can also be denoted by nu. Those are two different uh, standard notations. So we have this expression for delta E, and we also have this expression for delta E. 
So let's equate those two expressions for the change in energy and derive the Rydberg formula. So what we have is hc on lambda is equal to this guy minus this guy, right? The initial energy minus the final energy. But have a look at this. We have from the previous video that the nth energy level is just the first energy level, E1, divided by n squared. So if we just replace this index with an i and an f, we can rewrite the, the right-hand side as E1 over i squared minus E1 over f squared. So i and f, those are just integer values, right? Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These are all just values that we can substitute in. So this index and this index are uh, the, the notation for what energy level we're on, right? It's kind of like uh, rungs on a ladder or steps. So this is what we get from this side over here. But remember that E1 is actually a negative value. This guy over here, E1 is less than zero. It's a negative value, right? Because in the previous video, we actually absorbed a minus sign into the expression for E1. So that's going to become very useful in a second. So what we can actually do is we can divide both sides by hc and just get 1 on lambda. Right? That's what we want, 1 on lambda. And what we can also do is we can factor out minus E1. So if we divide by hc and we factor out minus E1, we get minus E1. And we can divide by hc. And when we factor out a minus sign, that actually allows us to swap these guys around. Right? Because this guy's going to have a minus sign, this guy's going to turn into a plus. So what we'll have is 1 on f squared minus 1 on i squared. Right? So we have this expression over here. So this over here is a minus. So this looks like a negative number, but it's actually not. Because we have a minus times a negative number. That's going to give us a positive number. We can group all of these guys together into one constant. And what we can actually see is that 1 over lambda is equal to some constant, which we'll call capital R, times this little mess over here. 1 over f squared minus 1 over i squared. And this guy is called the Rydberg constant. It's the same guy that uh, actually developed this formula, the Rydberg formula. The takeaway message for this video is the Rydberg formula. 1 over the wavelength is the Rydberg constant times this mess over here. This i, that's, that's an integer. And this f, that's an integer. This guy denotes the initial energy level, and this guy denotes the final energy level. In the case of emission, the initial energy level is going to be larger than the final. So what we actually know is that i is bigger than f. But if we take 1 over i squared, that's going to be smaller than 1 over f squared. Right, because this guy is a bigger value, a bigger value in the denominator is going to make a smaller value. Right? So we know that this minus this is going to give a positive value, and we're going to have a positive value times the Rydberg constant, and that's going to give us 1 over the wavelength. So we can actually reconstruct all of the observed wavelengths just from playing around with integers and different combinations of integers that correspond to energy levels. That is the beauty of the Rydberg formula. So in this video, we have derived the Rydberg formula based on some of the previous stuff that we've talked about in other videos. This Rydberg formula is a tangible way that you can see Bohr's model actually predicting real-world results. It's one of the first times quantum mechanics actually predicted real-world results with stunning levels of accuracy.